Los Angeles. Well, sure, you'd heard plenty. Not that Marie wrote home often, even before she'd hit the big time. Your twin sister had always been trouble. Flighty, so the headlines were no surprise. Run off surely from even her dream. Run off again just like she had last spring to Hollywood, leaving you alone to run the hat shop. After a dazzling debut, a marriage to a long-retired top producer followed too fast. But now he's dead. She's missing, and they're calling her the millionaire milliner in all the papers. Her next film's over budget and unfinished. Couldn't you possibly help them out and fill in for the rest? Pulling into town after a pleading summons from none other than the director himself, you shuffle off the train into a drizzly Los Angeles so unlike the one you'd seen in the pictures. At least you're prepared for the weather in a water-repellent trench coat and some perfectly pretty ivory leather pumps. Even more curious than the cloud cover, it's a gal here in a natty cap holding a sign with your name to pick you up. Hazel Webb, she asks. You nod to answer. They're lucky, all right, she adds. You do look just like her. She drives you to the apartment they had said they'd set up and bids you good night. But it's back in your crisp cream cotton suit set the next day for your first visit to the lot. Match the beveled black buttons to your perched patent pumps and get ready for them all to shout, Well, good morning, Marie, even though your sister is still missing. During the sets with the director the next afternoon, they insist you won't be needing a copy of the script. You'll just be standing in for the wide shots, after all. The close-ups are all in the can, thank heaven. You're listening attentively in your lovely soft rayon blouse and fresh natural linen A-line skirt, and are finally able to snatch up a script with a few sanguine smiles. Business-like today, huh? Asked your driver. You've learned her name's Susan, but everyone calls her Slim. Business indeed. A few papers to sign, saying unlike some, you won't go anywhere until the picture is finally wrapped. Of course, it's still a big secret you're standing in. Your gray suit accessorized with dark brown helps you stand out even while busy blending in. A screen test to check this whole charade is going to work in an evening gown of dazzling stripes. For a big party scene, you'll just have to stand near the piano and slowly sip whiskey, well, apple juice, in the middle distance, but isn't the gown fun? Your new friend Slim's even slipped in to catch a glimpse from near the door. to an evening ensemble from your own suitcase instead to join some of the other background players for a trip to the Macombo. Isn't that risky? asked Slim. This is my one chance to see Hollywood, you explain, but she still insists on waiting outside in the company car. Your tropical rayon looks lovely with a big orchid pinned on and with rouged up ivory gloves, whether she'll agree to come in or not. Perhaps you'll have to show her your more casual side, and a day of blocking another big scene seems a perfect opportunity to dress down. Try linen blend trousers, a tight silk blouse, and stable loafers for waiting around on your little marks on the floor all day. At least she's agreed you can buy her a sandwich at the studio's canteen for lunch. Back out again? Aren't you worried about your sister or just being spotted? She asked later that night. Well, it was ever so fun the last time, and you're sure Marie's fine wherever she went. Perhaps you seem a little heartless, so assure her you've got one by pinning a rhinestone version onto your lame jacket. It's just too bad that it turned out Hedda was at the very next table.
Scandal. Paramount caught in the conspiracy to cover up Marie Stock's disappearance by filling her role before the case is even closed. In a languid black rayon evening gown, it's no worries when the intrepid reporters manage to snap a few shots as you switch between sound stages. With the cat truly out of the bag, the studio's set on saving face, so you're back in some suiting for another meeting. This time it's a press conference, and you had better assure the papers and your friendly driver Slim too that you really are concerned about Marie's disappearance and you just don't know what all this next of kin business with the million has to do with your stepping in on set. Business like again need not be boring, there's scores of photographers packed in here after all. Truly feline fancy grabs her attention the next day, and somehow you're sure you're forgiven. Slim finally agrees to step into your new dressing room on the lot for a midday pick-me-up. How'd she end up a driver around here anyhow, you ask her at last? Well, something foolish like this, she sighs. And finally you share something better than any old secret could ever compare to. <laughs> gown for the next scene is startlingly sparkling, and it turns out they've lost the reel for the important turn at the end. You'll have to give it a go. It's a good thing you've been studying that script after all. You really will have to thank Marie sometime for disappearing like this, even if all of Tinseltown's still in a tizzy. Back in another gilded ensemble for standing aside shocked is your, well, Marie's romantic leads have a go at one another in a faux nightclub. You toss Slim a wink, but she's not smiling. Slim has a go at you in the hallway instead. She's found the postcard for Marie. You couldn't trust me. You lied, she claims. Well, sure, but there's no need to be so upset about it. It could have been worse. The press think you killed her yourself for her spot as a star. You didn't think so too, Slim, did you? She can't answer, and your parting is less than friendly. You've a new driver called Daryl, and it's hard to enjoy your debut. The producers love your close-ups and have offered you a contract of your own, too. But maybe Hollywood really is just a little too jaded. Then you spot Slim in the crowd. She's sorry, she says, and admits she's lied a little too. She stole the missing reel that led to you having to step in. It's you who's made me a star then, you proclaim. Can I still drive you home later, Miss Hazel Scott of Paramount? Have Daryl do it. We're drinking champagne. <laughs> 